So, just a quick brief. Uh, please introduce yourself, your program, your year, where you're from. Okay. Uh, so, my name is Adela. I'm in third year biomedical sciences with a minor in Spanish, and I'm an international student from Albania. Awesome. Okay. So, question one. Why are you studying abroad? I decided to study abroad because the situation in my country wasn't really good. There's a lot of um, corruption and political issues which do trickle down to the school system and uh, I just wanted a chance at a better education. I didn't see that as something that could happen in Albania and so I made the decision to move away. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so obviously you're from Albania but uh, what kind of issues were happening there that you know made you want to move? Yeah, so um, Albania went through a very, very strong uh, communist system uh, very recently. We've only been a democratic country for about 20 years, and because we are relatively still a new country, uh, we're having a lot of issues with our political leaders, a lot of corruption in the sense that you can't even go to a good school without paying your way through school. You know, you can't pass mm -hmm. an exam without paying the wow. professor. Um, and no matter how good of a student you are, there's always going to be someone else who has more money, who is going to uh, get a better grade and then get the job position that you want um, and it was just all those things combined together it seemed one of those things that no matter how much you try you could never really get what you deserve mm -hmm. so I thought of moving somewhere where I would have more of an equal opportunity Is it from your home or where you'd come from originally? Um, it's very, very different. So Albania is a southeastern European country. Um, our traditions, our culture, completely different. I think the biggest thing, um, especially with Toronto, is that Toronto is so diverse, and where I come from is not. There is nothing else except for Albanian people. So when I first came here, that was the thing that struck me the most as a big difference. Um, and then also just the way that people behave with one another. So we're a very, very um, close and warm community. So there's a lot of touching people are very close and something I notice in Canada is that people are generally um, colder with one another and kind of like norms of how you act with someone yeah. um, and boundaries are different so that what I say would be the biggest difference between the countries. One thing I did want to mention is so I didn't actually grow up in Albania I grew up in Melbourne Australia I spent a big chunk of my life there um, and so I would say that Canada was more similar to Australia so I did have a little bit of an understanding of how society here works so it wasn't as different as someone else's experience but it was still different than what I was used to. Do you go back home often? No, I actually don't. Um, so I came to Canada in 2013 and I hadn't gone back home until this past winter. I actually just came back from Albania but oh, before that um, I hadn't had a chance to return. The uh, second part of that question was, you know, if you do, why? Or if I don't, yeah, why not? Don't, yeah, yeah um, I don't go back for several reasons. Um, not that I don't want to, but you know, it is pretty far away and it's pretty expensive to go back. Um, as you know, being an international student comes with a lot of extra costs that a domestic student may not face. Um, and so, like tuition added with living here, etc. I just can't afford to go back all the time and um, since I came here I have really tried to work a lot and be really integrated in the community and so um, a lot of times during the summer especially I've had to go to work, I've had other volunteer opportunities that have kind of prevented me from taking time off and being able to go back home. So what do you think makes a location home or makes somewhere into a home? I think. That's something I struggled for for a very long time because when I first moved here, even though um, like the first couple years, I never really felt like it was home. Like although I was in school here and I had a, a house, um, it never really felt 
home and never felt like home um i think for me what makes it a home is um the people especially like the connections you make with people so if you have a strong support system people around you that make you feel comfortable i strongly believe you can find somewhere to call home anywhere um at the beginning of my journey here i hadn't found that yet and so that's what i was having a difficulty with but now that i found a really good support system and i've also found um a community of people here at ryerson especially that really understand me where i'm coming from and we connect on a lot of different interests um now i can truly say that it feels like home more than it did before so would you say that toronto is your home you know what i i do consider toronto home i think for a long time whenever people ask me i mean even now whenever people ask me i still say i'm not from here i'm very very proud to be albanian i'm very proud of the fact that i am an international student um but when i did go back to albania for the first time it was funny because i caught myself calling toronto home so much and i kept saying like oh i can't wait to go back home i can't wait to be back in my house and at school so i guess unconsciously i've gotten so used to it throughout the years that it has become home but um I don't th- I don't think I thought about it enough until I wasn't here and then I started missing it so much. Mm-hmm. Funny story when I first went back to Tr- Trinidad all on my own I went into the visitors line rather than the citizens one. Yeah. Like the passport thing. <laughs> yeah, same here like when I went back for some reason I didn't feel Albanian. It was super weird. I think the whole experience of going back after so much time, um I felt completely different. I felt like an outsider in my own community. And I think that's what made me realize that I have adapted so much to life here that now going back was a a different experience almost. So, why would you consider Toronto to be your home? I heard, I remember you saying a little earlier that, you know, you now that you have your friends, mm-hmm. you know, here to kind of like help settle you. What else do you think? I think it's a lot of things. Um in my experience specifically, I also had a big issue with calling Albania home because I didn't grow up there. So, mm-hmm. I moved back to Albania when I was 10. Um as a kid, when you're you completely grew up in a different country and then your parents just decide to move you on the other side of the world, like I struggled with that a lot. I didn't feel Albanian. I didn't know the language mm-hmm. until I was about 11 and so I couldn't go to school there. Um I couldn't speak to anyone. I it was I was completely isolating for the first couple of years. And so I never really felt like home there in the first place. So coming to Toronto, even though I'm not from Canada, I have no connection with it, I felt way more comfortable being in an English speaking environment in a really diverse and open place rather than being in Albania because just as a small child that's what I was exposed to first being in a western country. Um and so one of the big things why I did start calling Toronto home and I became I'm so comfortable with it is because this is more my comfort zone than Albania although I am from there. Mm-hmm. It's never something that I 100% resonated with. Mm-hmm. So I just I found myself much quicker here. It took me 7 years back home to find myself and then here in a matter of years mm-hmm. I felt very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Um so were there any difficult decisions that you had to make before coming to Toronto? I mean of course I think um the biggest decision was just coming or not at all because um my family has faced a lot of financial difficulties I have an older sister who also studies um in Toronto and uh bringing her here did create a lot of financial issues uh for my parents supporting her and so um we did have to consciously make the decision that you know if I do come here I know that it's not going to be easy um I unfortunately can't say that um you know my family does give me all of the opportunities and pays for my school and everything so coming here i just had to come into a consciously knowing that i was going to have to work really really hard um in school and actually work to kind of pay off my own tuition so i think that was the biggest difficulty because if i had been back home i wouldn't have to face this um and then also just the fact of being by yourself like It's a huge transition um living by yourself and not it's different like moving out by yourself but still being in the same city or country maybe mm-hmm. as your parents but yeah. then having that huge distance so that was also a big difficulty and decision I had to make that okay I know I'm coming here and I'm going to be completely by myself and I can't turn back I can't mm-hmm. decide to come here and then see that it's too hard and go back home so I think those two were the biggest decisions that I had to make I 
didn't have any of that. I was like, finally, I'm out of here. Really? Yeah. I think I, I was relieved, definitely. I think especially the last year, I couldn't wait to leave. And I, it's all I could think about. Like, it had just completely filled my mind. Um, but now that I look back and self-reflect, I realize that I maybe should have... No, I don't regret it in any way, but I mean, um, I that, like... How do I say this? Before, I was just so eager to leave that I really didn't value what I had back home. But now that I don't have it, I value it a lot more. Mm. So, um, how did moving from Albania to here affect you psychologically or in any other way? Um, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing. It did affect my mental health a lot and I didn't realize it until later on. Um, something that I realized is that... so. Especially in Albania, I know in a lot of other countries as well, um, there's a very different understanding of what mental health or well-being is. And a lot of times it isn't even considered a real thing. It's just, oh, you're just sad or like, oh, you'll get over it. Um, it's not serious. And so when I first came here, the first year especially was very difficult. I was still in high school. Um, I lived in a very unsafe environment just because, you know, I didn't know any better. I didn't have anyone to find a good house in a safe neighborhood. I didn't have anyone to really guide me and so um, there were a lot of different factors um, you know the people I was so saying with or that that affected my mental health a lot but I didn't understand it at the time like I just thought I'm really tired I'm really sad or oh I'm not eating well you know I'm not exercising but I didn't look more into what was how it was actually affecting me and then when I came to Ryerson um, my first year I actually started working with a program um, that specifically targets international students and their mental health mm -hmm. and um, kind of destigmatizing um, the different cultural understandings of mental illness or well-being in different countries um, and talking about it and once I started working with that program I looked back at myself and I was like holy shit like I was not doing well at at all uh -huh. um and it was actually getting involved in that program that helped me, um, you know, I started going to a counselor in my first year here and that helped me a lot with um, the psychological issues that I did have when I first came here. So it was it was a very, especially the first year, it was a very tough transition. I think in time I've worked um, really hard to get over it and it's become much better, but without Ryerson and kind of the helping me understand what mental health really is, I wouldn't have even realized it mm -hmm. like the way that I do now.